You made it to another episode of the We Did That Shit podcast, hosted by Maya and Babi. Join them as they share experiences and opinions about who did some shit, what they learned from shit, and how they got through some shit. Cousins by chance, friends by choice. These two passion-driven personalities create addictive conversation. Okay. In five, four, three, two. Hey, Maya. Hey. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at you because you are funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been told so many times today. <laughs> I get constantly, Ooh. you know what's funny? I don't even be trying to be funny. I'm just me. And people be like, you're so funny. And I'm like, like, I'm a, like, like a joke. Like, I'm like, ha ha funny. Because <laughs> like, I don't think that I'm, I don't, I never feel like I'm trying to be like, dun, dun, dun. this is, you know, it's just like, I, I'm just talking and people be like, you're so funny. I'm like, you're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you got a side eye people. <laughs> so what's going on with you how was your week my week is going good at the time of this recording i'm having a decent week yeah i can't really complain i mean so many things i could say wrong but we'll focus on the things that's right i had a funny incident happen today now i'm gonna just tell this story and you tell me at the end of the story would you have done what I did or would you Probably have not. done what a friend did? Okay. Nothing well, bad. Well, you know, yeah, you know I'm nice. So no. I, okay. <laughs> I, would probably, no. I would probably do the nice thing unless the person was on my nerves. But go ahead. Let's see. Well, this really, I don't know if I should be offended because it it seems like I would not do the nice thing. Well, did it happen at work? Yes. Yeah. Well, out know. of work, kind of like at lunch with coworkers. You don't even eat lunch with the coworkers. Well, I eat know. lunch with my one friend from work. Okay. Okay. So okay. here's the thing: me and my coworker slash friend mm-hmm. who's hanging on by a thread. Right. Because I'm um, counting the strikes. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm counting the strikes. Go ahead. Um, was out to lunch today, so mm-hmm. we went to the deli that is, you know, adjacent to our building. Mm-hmm. And so we're sitting in a deli. The deli closes at two, right? So anyway, long story short, we order our food. We sit in there, we eat, and we talk and laughing, ha ha, and talking about Kanye West and his goofiness and Noriega from Drink Tramps and how he's now on this apology tour. Whole big drawn long out conversation. So the owner of the deli, I see her leave out the door out the front door of the deli, right? Now, Mm -hmm. the deli is in a business, like it's Mm -hmm. in a building. Mm -hmm. I see her leave, and I see her kick to stand, like, to close the door, probably because it was, like, 157, and they closed at 2, right? Mm -hmm. So I I see her leave out. She's on her phone or whatever. Now, mind you, her co-worker is in the back or, like, you know, cleaning up. Then I see the, the lady from the deli in the window of the door, and she's just like looking in the window. Then I heard like a little tap. Like she so, locked herself out? Uh, in my mind, I'm like, oh, the lady is at the door. I didn't say anything because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, the lady is at the door. So then I hear the tap and I'm like, oh, okay, well, the girl that works for her is going to open the door for her, right? Mm-hmm. Now she was out there for a little minute and the girl, she never opened the door, but it was a light tap. I heard it. I, you know, I was still talking to my coworker slash friend, not thinking nothing of it. Then we see, I saw these two guys out there with the girl and they're all like at the window looking in and I'm looking at them and I continue to eat my food. Never saying nothing. You know, I'm listen. I'm like, I don't know what that lady doing out there. I seen the lady walk out the door. Now, if you can't get back in, 
I don't know that you can't get back in at this point, right? But in my mind, I'm thinking, damn, she might be locked out. But the lady that's with her is going to let her in, right? So in the meantime, between time, they, the men started waving their hand like, oh, like, can you open the door? Because they see me looking at them, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, I ain't going to go open the door. Then I see the lady and she's like, like motioning for me to open the door. So I say to my friend slash coworker, yo, your lady out there, I guess she can't get in. <laughs> right? I was like, you going to open the door for her? So he was like, they, the deli is closed like that. So I was like, uh, uh, the deli is closed. Wait. Okay. Your friend said the deli is closed. Yeah, he said that prior too, because I, I think, okay, I'm skipping a part. I did say, after I was like paying attention to her being out there, I did say like, they at the door. But it, all he saw was the two guys. He didn't see the lady. Mm. So he was like, the deli is closed. After a while, I was like, yeah, but the lady is out there. You know, like the lady is out there. I guess she can't get in. So he was like, oh, she out there? And I'm like, yeah, are you going to let her in? So he was like, why you ain't say nothing? I said, I thought her, I thought her coworker was going to let her in, you know? So he was like, I was like, you ain't going to go let her in. So he got up to go open the door. So we come back to the table. He was like, you was just going to let him stand out there. You wasn't going to say nothing. I was like, well, you the man in my mind. I'm, so he was saying that I was wrong because I left the people just like sitting outside. I thought her coworker was going to let her in. But you like, said the coworker was in the back. So what? Why would why did I have to get up to go let her in? But did the co-worker see her at the door? No. Then how would the co-worker know to let her in if she didn't see her at the door? Knock louder. I didn't want to get up and open the door. I was eating. I was eating. Then when I know, and here's another thing. I'm going to be real honest with you. It, it, it had a lot to do with, I was like, she out there with these two dudes. I don't know what's going on in that hallway. You left the door. First of all, don't go outside with you, without your key. You, you didn't know your door was locked? That's first. This is your business. You just letting people be. You know for business. a fact that she's the owner. Yes, she is. We okay. know her. You know, we go to the deli. He was like, you're something else. Like, you wasn't going to get up and let the lady in. You were just going to let her sit out there. And I was like, yeah. I said I was going to holler in a minute and tell the lady, like, yo, your people was at the door. Like, no, I didn't want to get up. And then when I noticed, like, when they was motioning for me to open the door, I was like, yo, can you go get, open the door for these people? Why should I have to get up to open the door when I was sitting with him? You get up and open the door for her. But I, did he see them at the door, too? No. No, because you were facing the door. He wasn't? No, we both was facing the door, but he wasn't paying attention to the door. I was paying attention to the whole setup when the lady walked out the door. And he didn't see them knocking the whole time. Tapping, he didn't see none he of that. He was tapping so light, but I see. But he her. didn't see it. He couldn't. He didn't hear it or see it. Mm -mm. And he's sure. sitting next to you, and and they're in his purview. Yeah. And he, and and he so looked. I said, "Yo, the lady is outside." He thought that it was just the two guys. He saw so, the two guys. Yes. All right. Let me get this story straight. I want to get this right. Okay. I want to make sure I'm understanding. You and your coworker slash friend are sitting in the deli enjoying lunch and conversation. Mm -hmm. And the deli is about to close. The hour is near that the deli is closing. And you see the owner of the deli and you know that's the owner. Yes. Leave the deli. Yes. The other deli employee is in the back. So not in the front. Can't see y'all regulars. Mm -hmm. It's in the back. I guess doing what they need to do to close up. Right. The owner that you know is the owner walks out a pair and comes back tapping on the window for whatever reason. You don't know why she's tapping on the window. Right. Mm -hmm. And then two other people come up and they knock on the window. At first they was just standing out there. You know, First they were just standing and I up. just was glancing, you know, back and forth in between the conversation and glancing over at the door in the interim of me glancing. One of them was well, she knocked again mm -hmm. in my mind. The co-worker 
is going to open the door. So I continue. But the, to- how would the coworker open the door if the coworker doesn't know that somebody's outside knocking? You should be paying attention to what's okay. going on in your restaurant. Okay. Um, that's not my responsibility. Right, right. And so the coworker should have been coming to open the door. Okay. I'm not thinking about opening the door, not because mm-hmm. I don't want to open the door, but because in my mind, I'm like, oh, the coworker is going to get it. The men are now starting to motion with their hands. Like, can you open the door? Okay. I see them. I see the woman and she knocks again in my mind. I'm like, well, clearly she's not knocking hard enough because I don't know if this lady can't hear her or what. Now I'm about to be like, yeah, to the lady in the back, like, yo, your people is outside. You can go open the door. The owner started motioning, like, can you open the door? So I say to my coworker slash friend, Hey, Your people is outside. You know, they need you to open the door. So he was like, looking at me like, how long they've been out there? And I'm looking at him like, I'm eating. So he gets up to go and open the door. So they like, oh, thank you so much or whatever. I never think nothing of it. Like to me, I'm not thinking about getting up and opening this door because one, I'm eating. Two, why did you walk out the door if you knew that the door was locked? Three, why isn't the person that's working with you paying attention? Four, I'm eating. Five, I'm lazy. I don't want to get up. Six, why is the people that is working with you not paying attention to what is going on? So my coworker slash friend says to me, damn, you knew they was out there. You wasn't going to open the door. I said, seven, I'm eating. (laughs) And I was like, I really, I, I wasn't trying to be smart. I really thought that the lady was going to open the door. He was like, yeah, but she in the back. How could she hear her? I said, why didn't she knock louder? If you knew that you wanted to get in, what about if we wasn't sitting there? You have to think about all scenarios. If we wasn't sitting in there, how was you going to get in? But you were sitting there, which is probably why she tapped lightly. Yeah, but you, first of all, the music was loud in the deli. The lady was in the back. She can't hear you. I'm just saying anything about music, but go ahead. And I'm eating. Well, I, I didn't want to get up. Listen, and, and that's so fine. I said, that's so fine. I said to my, I said to my coworker slash friend who was a male, you should have gotten up like you did and got the door. You're well, amazing. Adult, this is why this is why I'm confused. I understand mm-hmm. you're eating. You don't want to be bothered. You're not going to answer the door. I know you. That all sounds perfectly plausible to me. And I wasn't trying to be mean. Yeah, expert. I know. I know. The crazy part about it to me is how are you in the coworker slash friend in the same place and y'all don't see the same thing that's going on? I pay attention to everything. I, I understand that. That's Don't make excuses. On. How do you not know what's going on? This the gas station all over again for me. Not really, because it's not the gas station, because it's not his responsibility to get up and list. I mean, pay attention to the door to find out what the lady was doing. He was eating, too. So he wasn't think he wasn't looking. You're like, who is really looking at the lady and what it is that she doing? She's cleaning up. I, you know, I just happened to see her leave out the door, but I seen her kick, you know, to stop her like closing the door because she didn't want anybody else to come into the deli because the deli was closed. And so I'm thinking it's perfectly normal. And what I didn't think was normal was that your pe- coworker wasn't paying attention. That I think it's perfectly normal for somebody who, if the deli is closing and two regulars are sitting in there, I'm in the back cleaning up some stuff. I may not hear you. I'm tapping. And if I'm at the door trying to get in, I see two customers there that I know and I'm tapping lightly. I don't have to bang hard to get the person's attention in the back. They're someone in the front I no, understand. You, you do have to bang hard to get no. someone's attention you have to bang some, you have to bang hard now how about if i wasn't just the type of person that i am that was really just paying attention to everything it was music playing you know they had music playing in a deli you're not like the club but they had music playing we were sitting right by the speaker you know we were talking we were in very well, well, if, you didn't, conversation. if you didn't hear them if you didn't hear them okay you would have to not hard but what i'm saying is However hard you have to knock, there's a tap because you see me right there. There's a knock hard because I know there's music playing. And there's a knock harder because I know Shirley is in the back and there's no one up front. What I'm saying, I what I don't understand is 
How come you see all this and he doesn't? I watch everything. I probably see a lot of things that other people don't see. Like I saw her standing outside. And and so why wouldn't you say something sooner? Like if you're having a conversation and you be like, oh, look at them. And you just going to let them be out there for 10, 20 minutes and not even say, because I don't have a problem with, I would, uh, especially if the coworker slash friend was a male, I agree. Like, you know, you go to the door if you want to or whatever, even if you don't want to go to the door, I totally get that. I don't, I don't understand how we're in the same place and you don't see this. Because it wasn't and something why you honestly, wouldn't, if you saw it, why wouldn't you say before they out there for 25 minutes, like, oh, I guess they trying to get in. I'm not going to open the door. So if he wanted to go open a door, he could have been did that. I, I just that's what listen, I don't get. Listen, I don't get where that. I'm from is the same place that you from. I seen two dudes outside in the lady, whether I knew she was the owner or not. Bitch, have your keys with you. I'm not going to open the door and I'm not saying nothing about coming to get you to get in the damn door. I don't know what y'all got going on out there. And that's where my mind goes. Once the lady started, first of all, the lady wasn't motioning at first. She was just standing there looking at me like, you ain't going to open the door. And I was just looking at her like, you ain't got no key. And then the, the dudes was motioning. I don't know you. I know her. I don't know you. I'm not going to be like, yo, these dudes is at the door. No, I'm not doing it. I I live my life like I don't know what can be going on. And I was eating. <laughs> and that's just that on that. And he, could, and he just could not fathom that I didn't say nothing earlier. And I just was like, that's no shade to the lady. But like, also, I remember my mom telling me when I was young, Make sure when you go outside, you always got your key because you don't never know what's going to happen. Make sure you can get back in the house. Don't go outside and leave the door. You don't know if the door is going to lock behind you. Now, right now where I live at, when I go outside to take my trash, I take my key because I don't know what's going to happen. I want to make sure I got my keys. Lady, you own a business. Make sure you got your keys. This is a life lesson for this lady. This lady will never forget that when she walks out her door that she should have her keys with her. Really, they should be thanking me. I, I was about to say. I, I was about to I, say. I, <laughs> this lady is a grown-ass woman, but you're never too old to, to learn, learn lesson. things. <laughs> And there's that on that. There's that on that. Okay. And other than that, again, you know, you act, you started this conversation off asking me how my week was. It was good. And I taught a life lesson, which I'm always constantly trying to do. You know, if I could bring some gems to people, that's what I do. That's what's been going on for the week. How about you? How was your week? I don't even know now. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, I am, mm, I don't even know now. I am, um, so first couple of weeks ago, my week was transformational, then mm-hmm. progressive. And then this week is just more discovery. So I am purposefully living my life in discovery, you know, doing something with the progress, you know, if I learn something, I want to do something with it. So mm-hmm. I, I I want to keep up the momentum. It, it, I'm being purposeful. I don't want to be, you know, depressed this season. I, I want to be a uh, lifelong learner. So I'm doing things in that capacity. I'm very, I always think that I'm self-aware, like I'm impressing myself. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Like, you know, good for you. Like, you know, I'm standing up for myself. I'm treating myself better than I'm treating other people and I'm putting myself first. And so, um, and that's really big for me. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really big for me. And, um, I don't know what really happened. I just said, I want to stick with this momentum, whatever happened, you know, to create the shift. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> and then I'm just want to um, keep at it. I had a conversation with someone today and um, we, I was sharing something and he was like, oh my gosh, that makes a lot of sense. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, cause I watch you. I watch you all the time. Like we work together on one of my okay. projects. And um, he was like, because I watch you and I'm always trying to figure you out. Like, you know, you pop up, you do this, you get this. You know, I mean, get this done, you get that done. But there's something he was like the way that you 
are helpful. He was like, you're selfless, but it's a way that you're helpful, like this certain way. And he was like, you do anything, but you don't receive anything. Mm. I just, first of all, stay out my business. <laughs> right. Don't try to read me. <laughs> you don't know me like that. Mm-hmm. First of all, stay out my business. Second, note to self, fire counselor. Nobody, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just thinking like all these things in my head. And it's somebody who I kind of respect what he says. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? I respect what he says. He's never been, you know, shucking and jiving, no bull spit, stuff like that. So I, I respect what he says. I am lifting my own burdens because for so long, and we both have this, definitely, mm-hmm. 100%. We are the go-to people. Yes. We are the go-to people. It's, you know, people, this happens, they call us. Go to, hey, what do I do now? Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? And uh, a lot of times it's a very, it's pressure. No, all the time it's pressure. Right. But I'm looking at it now that I am not going to make it any more pressure than it has to be. I'm no longer living in a state of waiting for something else to happen. Or Mm -hmm. I'm going to save this because I know such and such will be calling and needing this. I'm no longer preparing to be Captain Save the Day. If I can save the day, by all means, I will. But I'm no longer holding on. I'm I'm folding my cape. I'm not living with the anxiety because it causes a lot of anxiety, the worry, the pre-planning, always on ready, all of these things that go with being the go-to person. You know, I'm I'm done. Now, and being the go-to person, I was like that at work. In my family life, and then at work, it used to be a benefit. Like you used to get some job security. Well, they ain't yeah. never gonna get rid of me because you know. Right. You know now jobs don't give a shit. At all, they never did. Just to put well, that out there, but I know what you mean. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it, it's there's no real benefit in being the go-to person. Now I look at it like if I can help you, I will. But I'm no longer breaking my right arm twisting my left, wearing toe shoes Mm. to tiptoe around corners to put on my cape to fly away to help you. And then I come back. And a lot of times the people that you go all out for, the people that you're helping have nothing. I don't have a go-to person. You, I mean, that's it. Yeah, we're like each other's go-to. Exactly. (laughs) We we have our own economy. We have our own session. We have our own everything. It's crazy. But yes, I'm I'm letting that anxiety go. I'm letting the whole thing go. Well, I'm very happy to hear that. That is a big uh, self-reflection and self-discovery. Now, it's huge because being a go-to person is very tra- draining. I, and you know what it is? Before, being a go-to person was like a badge of honor. But what happens is it turns into pressure which turns into anxiety, turns into stress, turns into worry, turns into health problems. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's a lot of repercussions from it. And I often think about when the switch happens, as far as like when it used to be like a badge of honor, like, oh, you know, I'm the the go-to person and it didn't feel like a burden at one time. Right. Like it really felt good to be able to help somebody, to, to, to have somebody rely on you and trust you enough to know that you had the knowledge and the wherewithal to help them to get through some stuff. And then it switched and it became like a burden. And I don't know if that switched because we started doing more like self-reflection. Like I think about COVID, you had a lot of time to like sit down. Like a lot of people, you know, I I, I think about COVID, like how when a guy or a girl, I ain't going to say just this, just a guy, but when a person like is in the streets and they run and they run and they run and they doing this, that, and the third, and then they got to go to prison and like prison can help or harm you. Right. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it's never going to be a re- rehabilitation. Like they try to make it be, but if you have the right mind, it could help you. It gives you time to like sit down and really reflect on things. It mm-hmm. gives you time to think about who was using you, who was abusing you, mm-hmm. what you was doing. Like, mm-hmm. damn, I was, I was, you know, cause you don't have no, nothing but time to think. So mm-hmm. I often think about COVID as 
that time. Not that we was in prison because being in prison is something totally different. But you know how I be having my analogies like, nah, right. this was like this. So I I think about that all the time because I know some people who have been went to prison and been able to transform their whole life when they came right. out Me just too. because yes. they had the time to sit and reflect on what it was or was or what it wasn't that they were doing to themselves, with themselves, with other people, whatever. I don't know if it was during that time, and I'm speaking about this for myself, that I had a shift in the thought process of, no, this is not a badge of honor. This is a burden. Like, this is an actual burden that people place upon you, but then you really take on and you place upon yourself. Because a lot of times when you're the go-to person, people might not even be relying on you. But right. you're so used to right. being the person right. that you right. jumping in. Right. You know, you're like, well, let me solve this before they even come to you. Right. You know, you thinking about what they could do, and, and they ain't even at the point where they can get right. they're not even at the point where they even at the solution. You know, they still exactly. in. Right. So and you go straight to solution based because that's who you are. You're so used to being the person. You're so used to other people relying on you that now you take on the burden and you're like, oh, I got to solve this. No, nobody asked you. Nobody asked you right. what to do, you know. Um, And so I know for me, that's when it was the switch for me when I well, it happened before then because it happened like right after my mother passed. I was like, I don't have the strength to do nothing for nobody right. else but i was i was still doing everything for everybody and then i was like girl what are you doing you're not even healing on your own self like and when i felt like i'm gonna have a nervous breakdown not just from the loss of my mom you know because this is before my my father passed not even from that i just felt like oh i'm about to have a nervous breakdown i'm thinking you're about to have a nervous breakdown because you've lost the most important part of you. No, you about to have a nervous breakdown because you still going and going and going. And people and yourself, because we don't, I don't want to take away from what I do for my to myself, mm-hmm. are putting all this pressure on you, all this burden on you, and you still doing it, even though you need deep in this. And so now you about to have a nervous breakdown. Then then what's going to happen? And you know what I thought about when I was about to have a nervous breakdown? When I was getting fully dressed and trying to get out the door and holding the handle and couldn't turn it and all that kind of stuff. That's mm-hmm. how bad it was. You know what I thought? Damn, if you have a nervous breakdown, how you going to make sure you. everybody else is all right? What? I did. I said, if somebody is, and they didn't already lost your mom and she was the person, she was the go-to person. And now if they lose you, then what they going to do? I wouldn't even think about my damn self like that. You about to have a damn nervous breakdown. You about to check out of here. You ain't even going to be around. Screw that. What can you do for yourself? I automatically thought about like, damn, make sure you are right so that you can continue to take care of other people. And that I use that example to say, that's what happens. We even put it on ourselves. Mm-hmm. We do sometimes, and and I will say this: Cheryl Hilton was the ultimate go-to person. Yeah, she was, and she was a go-to person that I you don't even realize how she's the go-to person for so many people. And I'm like, well, how many? This is this some more hours in a day, some more days in a week that I don't know about? Like, how do you tap in? Because I want to follow her all the time. We in the Reading Terminal all the time. We doing this all the time. When do you have time to be doing this with these people? Mm-hmm. Like, what is going on? Yes, you do put the stuff on yourself. And I learned, and I wanted to. It's not, this is not like a, a recent discovery. Mm-hmm. This, you know, it, it's been going on for years. As long as I can remember. I remember being very young. I think I was in like, still in grade school. And I got a good report card and my sister didn't. And I was going to get new sneakers and she was. And I mm-hmm. got a, a pair of sneakers that cost less and it was a sale. So we could both get sneakers mm-hmm. because I didn't want to get new sneakers and she couldn't. Mind you, I don't want to say we were poor because it wasn't anything that we lacked. <laughs> I mean, like we had the best clothes, the best shoes, food out the wazoo, you know, nice homes, mm-hmm. clean furniture, everything. It it was like, it was kind of like I'm getting new sneakers and you weren't. So I'm going to have eight pair. You only going to have seven mm-hmm. for, play, for play sneakers <laughs> on Thursday. <Right>. But, <laughs> so it wasn't like, 
you she was going to school with holes in her shoes and stuff like that. But it was just like I could get something and I would rather share what I have, even though you did not do what was required to get the reward. Mm. And that is where my problem always lies. You know, and we do like even today, the losers get a trophy and stuff like that. What are we teaching people? You know, mm. that you can do you can be a bum and still have everything, you know, and it's it's not true. It, it's not you know, it's a false sense of reality. Mm. So it's not like it's a new concept for me. It's something that I've been working on for years and years and years. But whenever I get a revelation that helps me get to a point, a person told me he was like, it's, it's about value. Mm. It's about value. It's not about your time. It's about your value. You know, this person can charge $20 for a haircut. This person can charge 50, you know, because this person thinks that his time is worth $20 an hour and his value is worth $20. And this person thinks that his value is worth 50. And guess what? $20 people aren't going to come get a $50 haircut, but they'll both be working. It's, it's, it's about value. Mm. So I said, you know, and I'm learning how to value myself. And it's very uh, liberating. It's very yeah. liberating. I feel more free than ever. I am open to helping people still. They're not going to call me much. They're not going to call me much. And I don't even have to say no. I don't because I can say, you know, whatever the truth is. And, you know, everybody wants instant gratification, you know, fix it. And even when people, and I always said this, even when I was young, I said, oh, I always want people. When, remember when 976 numbers came out? And you mm -hmm. had to pay like people. You don't remember nine seven six. Oh yeah, <laughs> I thought you was talking about an area code. That's I'm like, what? Yeah, like, no, yeah, okay. Like mm -hmm. this sixty seconds of sixty dollars per minute, five dollars yeah. per minute, or whatever. <laughs> and I would, I would say when I was a little kid, I'd be like, oh, I want somebody to pay to call me. <laughs> I always wanted that, <laughs> like you know, consultation fees. Like yeah, if you want to talk to me, if you want my time, you know. So I valued myself then. I don't know what happened. Um, but I'm getting back there. That's Good for it. you. Yeah. Good for you. I mean, it's something that's so very important because when we don't value ourselves and when we continue to be that go-to person, that burden gets very heavy. And in, re in reality is it's not sustainable. Like, it's not, right. you know, it's not sustainable. And it, it wears you out to take on other people's stuff. Like it, it really does. It wears you out. It affects too much. Like that, when people used to say all the time, pay yourself first. Yes. I used to be like, yeah, pay yourself first. And then, and I always used to make excuses. Like you can't pay yourself first. You got to pay these bills. You got to do this. You got to do that. But pay yourself first comes in so many forms. Like mm -hmm. you really do got to pay yourself first and not being that person that everybody can dump on. Cause that's also what happens when you become the go-to person. It's like people dump on you again. It's a good and a bad thing. Yes. And yes. more and more it, it's starting to feel too heavy. So you, you're focused on the bad of it more than you are the good of it. Like you're my go-to person. You, you know, my mom was always my go-to person. Now and I don't have mm -hmm. my mom here anymore. You, my go-to person, you, I, Kathy, you know, mm -hmm. like I got certain people that's my go-to people that mm -hmm. I don't, I never really utilized y'all in certain ways because I never had to, right? Everybody was, my mom was the go-to person for every damn body. I mean, from yeah. the damn, from the, from the dogs to damn, you know, it's like, what should I do with my dog? No uh, exaggeration. Uh, yes. Literally like what, I can't make a life decision yes. without you saying, nah, -uh, baby, that ain't, that ain't, mm. that ain't right. And it's so funny because like now that she's not here, the roles have reversed so much. It's mm -hmm. like people look at me and say, oh, yeah, you look like her. Well, let me give it to you now. Right. And, and, and now and I'm like, well, do I got all these hours in a day? Because I feel like people calling me about their kids. I don't have no kids. People calling me about the kids. I'm not married. People call me about the marriages, you know, and some people just want to talk mm -hmm. and vent. But some people want your advice. Like, and I'm like. Girl, I can't eat that damn advice. I ain't raising no kids. But, you know, you just have the thing. So you're my go-to person. You know, I definitely need you to get yourself together because I, <laughs> you could be my go-to person and then you messed up. Right. You know, but even as, because you're my go-to person and I'm a go-to person, I don't try to even pull, but so put so much on you because I'm like, I know how it is. So I don't want to dump. 
and you a smarty arty ass. I know that you know a lot about a lot of things. I can call you. I can, mm -hmm. I can you know, get your advice. I, I can say, let me run this by Bibby. Or I talk to people and I'll be like, hold on. I think this sound good. Mm -hmm. Let me run it by Bibby because she'll know. <laughs> she will know, you know. So again, it's a good thing. Those yeah. type of things are good things. People want instant gratification. Let me call my go-to person because I know that she's going to instantly solve it or he's right. going to instantly solve it. And I don't have to put any work into it, you know. And, you know, your go-to person, just in case you didn't know, got to put work into what it is yes. you want to put work into. Your go-to person is also has feelings, emotions, you know, and you harbor and feel those things that you're being the go-to for. Because it's not just go-to stuff like, like I said, I'll call you and say, what this letter sound like? How does that sound? I need to approach my boss. How should I do it? You know, things like that. That is a good thing to come to people about. But if I got to be like, girl, I don't know how I'm going to pay these light bills. And I, you know, like, I don't know how I'm going to eat and, 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 and all that type of stuff. That person that is that person for you, they internalize those things. You try yeah. not to, but you do. You hold on to them. To pay yourself first, you have to pay yourself in all kinds of ways. Pay yourself yes. in love. You know, you got to yeah. be kind to yourself. You got to be okay with where you are. You know, be okay with not taking on everybody's stuff and knowing they're going to be all right. It's so funny. I give this advice out a lot and I don't take it myself. I'm always quick to tell somebody they'll be all right. Believe me, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll be just fine. I was telling somebody not long ago. The person was worried about somebody that they love, right? This person was one time a fiend, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, child, when they was a fiend, they didn't think of, they was doing it up. Right. They had somewhere to live. There ain't nobody more resourceful than a fiend. <laughs> uh, uh, nobody. I don't care. It, it's, it's nobody that's more resourceful than a, than a drug addict. Ain't no way you go to sleep with Bro. nothing. Right. <laughs> hey, make something nothing. happen all day, every day. Got nothing. <laughs> when you go back to sleep, you're high. Right. <laughs> so, so my point is, they going to be all right. I'll mm -hmm. be like, girl, they going to be... I was like, girl, they going to be fine. Believe you me. When they was getting high, they had a place to live. Might have been in the street. Might have been under a bridge, but they had some place. They might have had to do some strange things for some change, but they got it. Now, and all of a sudden, you got to take on the burden for everything. Believe me, they'll be fine. Right. And then I think to myself, after I say it each and every time, and you know that's my favorite line, two people. Yes. Right. Right. yes. Why don't you take that same advice for yourself? Like the people that you're helping. This is how I look at it. Now, if you call me, ask me a question because you know I know the information or I may know the information, I do not have a problem with that. Call me, ask me if I know I can share it with you, you know, this, that. I might ask you some questions because I want to give you the best answer that I have. Fine. I don't mind that. I also don't mind. A lot of people say, oh, they only call when they need something. I don't have a problem with that either. If I don't talk to you on a daily basis and stuff like that and you need something and you think that I can help you, I don't mind. You know, especially if you know that I care about you. And, you know, I would help you if I could. If that's what you need, you don't have to be like, oh, hey, how you doing? How you been? Oh, yeah. How the kids that you don't have to do none of that. But like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, this is what's happening. I have this. And, and now I can say this now before it was like I was killing myself trying to help you even if I couldn't. But now if I can help you, I will. If I can't listen, I'm I'm going to lift you up in prayer tonight when I pray. Because that's all I can do. If something happens two days later, I may check back in and say, hey, I could do this. Do you still need something or whatever? You know, if that's what you want, I can do that. But I'm not going to worry myself. Mm. Um, I'm not going to kill myself like I used to do. And the people that were my biggest worry, yeah, I still worry about them a little bit. But they getting it together. I was going to say, they they all right. one thing's for certain. And two, all right. <laughs> sure. if you don't do it, you don't think this. But if they you don't do it, yes. the people will do it. Right. And that's if it's necessary, because a lot of times it's stuff that they can go without. And people have to deal with the consequences of their own actions. Like, you know what they say? People will slap a beehive, get stung by bees and then blame the bees. Mm. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they will. <laughs> they will. Like, oh, can you believe it? I got stuff. You know, behind wasn't bothering anybody. You know, you just walking by, you slap it, and you get stung, you're going to blame the bees. Mm-hmm. No, you know, people have to be accountable for what they do to put them in situations. Now, I still want to be the go-to person. I want to be the go-to. I have tried to stop focusing on being a good person. I am a good person. Yeah. You know, I, I'm stop the I can't focus on being a good person. I'm trying to focus on just being great. Mm. I think I am innately great. I was born great. When I was young, I had great ideas. As I grew older, I had great ideas. I still think of great ideas now. I may not be able to do them all, but that's what I want to focus on. And I want to be the go-to person. Like I said, a couple of weeks ago, I had lunch with a couple of friends and I don't have many friends like a slew, you know, I'm not into the girlfriend thing, but I had lunch with a real friends, like my sisters. And I was like, every time we're together, I feel like I'm just lifted. And so I want to be the go-to person for that. Hey, we're getting together. You want to come? Yep. Mm-hmm. Hey, I learned that you want, we want to get together and talk about it. You want to come? Yep. Hey, did you know this? I want to share this with you. Thanks. You know, that's the go-to person I want to be, mm-hmm. I, you know, I've already have given literally everything but my life because mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not Jesus. I can't lay my life down and then pick it back up again. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to be like him, but I, I don't have that. You know, I have literally, Let given know. <laughs> I have literally given everything except my life, you know, for other people. And now I, I want to, I need to pour into me. And like you said, we have each other. It's me and you, boo. <laughs> it's me and you. So if I can't, if I can't ask you for $500, don't ask me for $500. If I can't go to you and say, you think you can help me do this, 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 and you can't help, don't, you know, don't call me for this, 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 you know, because you know who you do your stuff with. Call them people. For that. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But if you really need something, I'm always here to help. You know, that's just how I feel. But I want to be the go-to person for greatness. When you're thinking about greatness, oh, let's call Bib, see what we can do about that. That's where I'm shifting. That's where I'm shifting from stop being a good person and just being great. I love it. And we always say, be great this week. You know, do that shit. So it is important. And once you were talking and you were saying it, I felt like, right. That's what I want to be. The go- <laughs> That's what I want to be the go to person for as well. You know, we have we share the same sentiments in that area mm-hmm. um, because we've always been that person for a lot of people. And so I, um, you know, did. And it is I need it for the betterment of myself. Like, right. you know, you really I said it before. On the podcast, I'll say it again. It nothing remains truer than you can't pour from an empty cup. You really cannot. Like you, we talk about it all the time because we talk about self-esteem a lot. You really do have to love yourself. You gotta love yourself. You gotta be good for yourself. You have to have your health together for yourself. Like you really cannot continue to give if you don't have it for yourself. Mm-hmm. And nobody is going to recognize that. But you self-discovery is really real and we need it. Like, you know, I know that being the go-to person has harmed me in a lot of ways um, and it has helped me back in a lot of ways. And as far as I am in life, I could probably be further, Mm -hmm. even though like these, these are the plans that God has for me and I'm okay with it. You know, I live a good life. I, you know, so I'm, I'm okay with it. But when I think about, the plans that I had for myself and that I did not do holding myself back, it all stems from helping other people. You know, it all stems from being that person that, like you said, people, you know, lean on and you want to make sure that they're all right. Like I'm a selfless person in that way. I want to make sure that other people are all right before I even make sure that I'm all right. Like a lot of times I have done a lot for family before I've done it for myself. Right. A lot. Like I'll go out and buy somebody else a fifty thousand dollar car 
and won't even, and I'll be like, well, I'll be all right driving this little hoopty. As long as they good and they can get around, then they ain't got to call me. And then we do that. I want right. to make sure they're all right because then they ain't going to have to call me. And one thing about people that call you. and They will call you anyway. They will call you anyway. You can set them up. I, I'm learning that too. It's it's amazing the things that you learn. Yes. Um, when you get older and you kind of like you know how you, you know how when you're young you be like old people is like this and old people is like that. But when you start getting older, you like I understand exactly exactly why they're like that or you know exactly. you gotta live life long enough. You have to have experiences, yeah. and once you start having those experiences, you realize like. Oh, this is what they were talking about. And this yeah, that's what the saints call by and by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I mean, I agree yeah. with you. I want to be, I want to be that person as well. I want to have stop having other people's stuff be on me and affecting me in a way that I'm not able to move forward. Like you said, have greatness poured into me. I want to know that people are okay and be okay with where they are. And if they're not knowing that they'll figure it out um, and figuring it out for my damn self first. Right. You know, and to, that it's sense. okay to, to, to do something for yourself, to pour into yourself, to yes. pay yourself first. Yes. It's okay. Yes. It's not selfish. No, it, it's not. It's not self-centered. It's not selfish. It's necessary. It really is necessary. And a lot of times what we do when we overdo it, because we've both overdone it, you know, when you overdo it, you hinder that person's growth. Mm -hmm. You hinder that part. And I'll talk like my daughter. My daughter had a car. She had a car before she had a license. Mm -hmm. And they, they fancy. <laughs> you know how they go. You know how it is. First class flights and car services and cars. And <laughs> but she had a car and it was like, oh, my car, my car, my car. And I'm like, Adasia, you know, you have to get the car service. The car requires more than gas. The, you know, freshman year, she couldn't have her car on campus. I mean, just push her off a building. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like life was coming to an end. I can't have my car. Right. And then so sophomore year, couldn't wait to come home to get her car. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like, and so she's just doing it up with this car. And I'm saying like, look now, you know, your car has to be serviced, this, that, and the other. Like she blew the engine. She ultimately just blew it. No oil changes, no nothing with the car. Just my car. And it was right. And it was like, you looking at me. So I know you don't have a job, but you, it's still your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mom, I had to take my car to be serviced. You know, this, this is the mileage. This is what, even if it costs like, all right, you know, cause I want you to be safe. And, um, so she hasn't had a car since mm -hmm. her own car. And, and it's because I will not rob her of the opportunity to feel what it's like to purchase her <laughs> own car. I, I just, <laughs> I'm not doing it. So I, if you want to live here, Tokyo, Taiwan, coast, wherever you want to live. When she was in Taiwan, she had a scooter. She said that was the mode of transportation, you know, but she bought her own scooter. Mm -hmm. you know? So when you keep doing, doing, and, I, and she probably appreciated a car. She just don't know. She wouldn't sit down long enough to learn anything. You know, so that's that's what happens. So you hinder people when you do too much. And I don't want to. And unfortunately, I, one of the things that I struggle with was I would do two things. One, it would be like, oh, oh, they don't know no better. If they if only somebody would help them with this, then they can get there. Oh, if you just give them this, then they can get there. Oh, if you just give them that part, they can get there. I would say that all the time. And it wasn't true because you're sitting there, you think that you're spoon feeding and they like, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. You know, just like if you take an animal out of the wild and you keep feeding it, then they're going to expect you to keep feeding them. So, and also sometimes people have to hit their rock bottom. I'm always diving in, you know, before well, you hit they, the ground. You, right. So they keep bouncing back, bouncing mm -hmm. back on me. Rock bottom for me is flying coach. You know, <laughs> just, I'm just saying <laughs> everybody has their own rock bottom. Right. But my rock bottom was lower than that before. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so you have to reach your own rock bottom. People have to reach their rock bottom in order to want to do something to pull themselves up. It, we talk about is the pressure of being the go to person, but we are putting all the pressure on ourselves. Yes. And I'm just simply saying I am letting that go. Mm -hmm. I have let that go. Me too. Now I, I, it's more of a process with me. I'm, you know, but I have, I'm doing well. 
it's a lot to come out of that. It's a lot to come out of. It's a lot to let that go. I think a lot of that has to do with me being a caretaker for a long time as well. You know, it's like you really got to, after you've been a caretaker for a certain amount of time, you have to find yourself again when you don't have that. So then you, you, you hook on to the next thing to take care of, even unbeknownst to yourself. You right. say, I can't wait to be rid of this right. and I'm going to be free. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But then you latch on to the next thing to take care of. So I, I'm not saying that I'm not better. I surely am. But I also feel like I'm being the go-to person for other things now, you know, maybe not for solving your problems, but also like you can't make a move without me right? or, or, (laughs) you know, or like, oh, you be the planner for every damn thing. I don't want to do that either. You know, I want to be the person that's not responsible. I always used to tell my mother, oh, I wish I could just be, I could just wish I could be a selfish person and not care about nobody and nothing but me, just me, Maya, 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 Maya. And I'm so not like. Right. It has to be rehearsed. And Mm -hmm. I would rather rehearse the positive things than, you know, to rehearse the things that are not as positive, Mm -hmm. doesn't bring as much freedom or joy and um, the fact of the matter is we, we, we have a village, so we should all be able to depend on everybody in the village at any given time. You know, so when you're when you're down, when you're broken and you need something, those people need to be able to pour into you. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's what makes it that's what builds the pressure. That's what makes it lopsided. So it's important to always have that balance. I don't mind pouring into people that I know can pour into me. It's, it's, I don't even feel like it's pouring. You know what I mean? It's it's like, oh, well, it's, you know, we're all keeping these fences mended. We're, we're all doing a part. It, it does matter, you know, how you deal with other people's stuff when they bring it to you. Mm-hmm. It's important not to be a dumpster, to remind yourself that you're not a dumpster, to help and not to um, cripple and not to do something. And this is especially for me because I used to do it all the time. I would help people beyond what I was able. Mm. And I would have myself in situations with no one to call on. And a lot of times, truth be told, I wouldn't even, I don't ask people for help because I know it's my own fault. Even though I know that there's probably maybe one or two people that I could be like, oh yeah, I did it again. Sorry. You know what I mean? Can you do this? But I just was like, all right, I'll eat it. But listen, that kind of eating don't get you full. And I got sick of that. And you know how I feel about eating. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) No, it is important. It is important. You are so right. So I hope to uh, get a little further the next time we'll have a check in. And I hope to be a little bit more. Uh, you know, a little further in uh, where I'm at. I'm doing better, but I could be doing great. You got anything else? Be great. No, I mean, if we had a topic, my who did my week just took up the whole topic. <laughs> but that is good. It's I mean, yeah, sometimes it's like that. You know, that's what the podcast is for. Sometimes it's like you we giving out gems, even when we talking about our week. I I didn't taught this lady a lesson, and now you didn't taught me a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> she learned a lesson <laughs> yeah she and i learned one i learned one with your week as well so thank you yes and with that I don't think <laughs> nothing else needs to be said we're gonna go ahead and get on out of here for this week uh we hope that you enjoyed this week's podcast follow us on social media facebook instagram twitter we're at we did that shit YouTube, 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 make sure that you subscribe. We always post the link um, to everywhere you can listen to the podcast and to our YouTube on our social media. So be on the lookout for that. Click the link, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time that we drop a new episode. And remember, we drop a new episode each and every Monday. Follow me on my personal Twitter. It's my my 13. That's M Y M Y one three. And I'm at Babi Amina. That's B-I-B-B-I-A-M-I-N-A. And as always, we'll see you guys next week. Go Birds. Stick to know, baby. Stick to know. Stick to know. We doing a damn thing. We and we beat Dallas's up. Yes. Yeah.
Yeah. Well, they knew they wasn't coming to Philly with all this momentum and leaving with a win. I, I hope they knew that. You're right. Um, and I heard that their quarterback, his wife came to the game and he was like, oh, why are you coming? She's like, oh, baby, I want to support you. And she used her points. I would be oh. mad if I wasted my points. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> she used her points to fly. So hopefully she flew first class. I don't know how many points she had, but I know I'd have been mad that if I wasted all my points, I'd have been like, baby, I'm pulling for you. But anywho, go birds. I love you, Maya. Love you too.